Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Andy Mouse, and I'm the director and CEO of Plains Art Museum in Fargo. Um, welcome once again to our series of brief conversations intended to provide some hope, inspiration, and guidance uh, during this time of crisis. As we may know, people tend to turn to the arts when, uh, when the world is in crisis, as we are today. And because of that, we're responding with a diverse group of speakers um, and guests um, to have brief discussions to help us get through this together. And I think all in all, the hope is that we can come out on the other end of this uh, with a little peace of mind and um, some more hope, inspiration, and definitely related to today, a little bit of joy. So we'll start off each conversation with a little quote. And today's is by the American Tibetan Buddhist nun, uh, Pema Chodron. Generosity is an activity that loosens us up, offering whatever we can, a dollar, a flower, a word of encouragement. We are training in letting go. And I like that quote today. Um, because it very much relates to our guest, Marjorie Schlossman. Marjorie, thank you for Hello, Andy. Hello. Thank you for joining us. She's a master at generosity. She's also a master at loosening up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and doing what she can. <laughs> so for all of those reasons, um, I saw that quote and I was like, oh, that's the perfect quote for um, for Marjorie. So um Thank you for, for joining us. Marjorie, um, before we begin, um, please tell us, for those people who don't know you, um, tell us who you are, a little bit about yourself personally and professionally. Well, I'm an abstract painter. Lately, I've been painting 10 foot wide canvases and I feel like this is my wheelhouse and I love it. I'm having a great time. Um, I also make lots of little watercolors I've been painting for more than 40 years. I have um, more than 4,000 paintings uh, that I've accumulated too. But I do have another side to my life. Well, I, uh, lately I'm learning viola Bach, suite number one in G. So, so there, there's that. I play in the symphony also, which I think really works well with my painting, the music. Um, but I have seven children. And Andy, I'm excited because in the next 10 days, I will have my 14th and 15th grandchild. Oh so, my gosh. I know, I know, it's so exciting. They're, two they're multiplying. Daughters, two of my daughters are pregnant, so. Oh my gosh, well congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> so joy, um, yeah. welcoming new people to the world. Um, you, um, you produce a lot. You produce wonderful children, these wonderful paintings. You've just yeah. added so much to the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still making mistakes on the box. It's awful, but oh well. <laughs> so, so of those, of those things, what, are, what would you consider to be your areas of expertise? Um, I think uh, uh, abstract painting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I would also mention to our audiences, Marjorie uh, has a group at Plains Art Museum, a wonderful group of yep. uh, many established, some emerging, um, and some veteran painters called the Plains School of Abstract Painting. Um, yes. Are, you all meet once a week at the museum, and they're, yep. the, it, it's sort of like today, it's facilitated um, guidance from a master painter. Would you, is that how you would describe it? Yes, I, I feel like I'm their teacher some days, but some of those people, I'm a mentor. So, um, yeah, yeah. Some of those people are real professionals and um, yeah, but I weigh in anyway. I, you know, I, I uh, comment. Hopefully, hopefully they appreciate those comments. Oh, I think yeah. so, I think so. There's, you know, whenever I'm in the studio, um, the group is always, um focused i would i would definitely say focused, but in a fun and focused way. on art you have a the conversation movie. is always about art it's not gossip it's not what movie did you see last night it's about art 
-hmm. And they, they do um, help each other and encourage each other. I think everybody in there is uh, an individual, different from everybody else, and therefore contributing to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I think the diversity of the people in there is absolutely key. So we're, we're sort of arrogantly saying we want to start an art movement. And we think it's pretty fun because how can you start an art movement when you're not in L.A. or New York or Paris? But we think we can do it in Fargo-Moorhead. <laughs> well, and you know my view on that. We won't, that's a topic for a different discussion. I, I think so much of it is produced in middle America. So um, yeah, There you go. There you go. So, yep. So um, because you are an artist yourself and you work yeah. with so many artists, you know artists well. Yeah, so, I do. Um, here, here's the thing. I think that this time has been exceptionally difficult for a lot of people. I think a lot of people are losing yes. their jobs. I think a lot of people are feeling like this is a very traumatic experience. Um, at, you know, and I think that artists are no exception to that. Like, I, I do think that artists are feeling the pain of, of the economic um, shutdown of, of the United States. And yep. a lot of jobs have been lost. A lot of projects are delayed indefinitely yep. to 2021 and so on and so forth. However, I will also say this, artists tend to be able to synthesize yep. complex situations um, within their creative practice. So um, my question is this, I don't know the, the answer to this myself, but why do you think that so many artists do great work during times of crisis? And what is it about artists that enables the resilience needed to get through tough times? I think a person's art gives the artist a different way of looking at things. And I think the intensity that one feels in a difficult time is helpful. Hmm. You know, I'm hearing that writers should wait, that they should write about this crisis later when they synthesized it. I don't know if that applies to painters, but I have noticed that the colors on my latest painting are harsher than they were before. So maybe I'm dealing with that harshness. Mm -hmm. So one thing I wanted to say too, Andy, is for people that are stuck at home um, and they don't paint, and they say to themselves, I have no talent, I can't paint. I can't even draw a straight line. I would say, terrific, it's better if you can't draw a straight line. If you want to start abstract art, don't do straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> now, but, now, um, but I've had, I disagree. I see, you know, some of those emerging artists you're talking about, Andy, started at nothing when they came and they were adults already and they started at nothing and they said i can't do this i don't know how to do it and amazingly they developed step by step by step uh painting by painting they developed over making mistakes having triumphs having input from other people sharing and i think one of the most important parts is they've been looking at important art in our culture. They've been looking at uh, Monet, at, oh, who's the wonderful Japanese artist that did the wave? That painting is still so iconic and everywhere. Um, but anyway, for the most part, um, it's important to look at what's been done in art. It's part of learning the language and learning the language of art, especially abstract art, is so important. Yeah. You aren't going to appreciate abstract art if you don't know that language, just like you don't really get jazz if you haven't listened to quite a lot of it. So, so you've made over 4,000 paintings. I mean, there's some resilience yeah. there. Over 40 but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> over 40 years. I mean, yeah. that, that, is, that is prolific, especially considering the size of so many of your canvases. So yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, this, this self-motivation yeah. um, and this um, sharing of information and finding constant inspiration around you must be something to do with the resilience that we see. Because, you know, we've seen artists makes, make amazing work during um, tremendously terrible times, including, for example, World War, World War II, which was, of course, a pivotal point 
yeah, yeah. History, and so just thinking about um, you know artists having this this self motivation, I think you you exemplify that perfectly. Um, so here's a, here's another question. Given given the fact that so many artists uh, that there are so many artists, and artists are right now experiencing the same things, but in a maybe a slightly different way that everyone else is. Uh, what can people do to um, support artists um, and their work during this time, even though we're all socially isolated? So we can't go to galleries, we can't go to museums. What, what can we do? Well, I personally would love to have people come in and look in my studio. I would love to have people observe what I'm doing and talk to me about it, talk with me about it. So I'm sure other people would appreciate that kind of attention also. Sure. So that's one thing. But I also, Andy, I think that we artists are very well positioned uh, at a, in a time like this because we're used to being alone. We're used to delving into topics. We're um, used to that, the problem solving that you do when you're making a work of art. Um, and, and I think, and we're, and we certainly benefit from all the extra time that we have because we're not out, out doing errands and we're not, we're not out in the world. So I think, sure. I think it's actually, I, I hate to say this, but I'm enjoying this. This sequestration oh, is wonderful. <laughs> 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 That's really funny. I really appreciate that perspective. You are the only person that I've spoken to thus far that has said that they're enjoying the, the isolation, but I can see why, because you're surrounding yourself with, with um, your beautiful work and mm -hmm. you're producing tons of work with less distraction. So um, I, can, I can definitely see why. So um, tell us, you know, what, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, as a as a working artist, and by by the way, and not everyone has the um, luxury of being primarily an artist. I think a lot of artists, you know, work in other ways. Um, Andy, you, Andy, I think if you're, an, I I worked in other ways too. And you, did. Have, you did. Having seven children definitely is a job. That's seven jobs. <laughs> 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 so, um, I think, um, you know, if you're going to play the viola like I do, or the violin, which is really what I do, and the symphony, mm -hmm. you have to practice every day. You really have to keep your chops up. You have to really do it. It's different for me with my painting, the abstract painting. I, I do do it every day, by the way, but I don't um, spend a certain amount of time painting. I don't uh, figure out how long I want to paint. I tend to wander into the studio, uh, paint a bit, leave and come back later. And I feel refreshed every time I leave. I, I come back and I see things freshly. I think that what I do is a, a lot more akin to being a poet. A poet doesn't sit down and say, I am going to work from 8 a.m. to 12 noon on making poetry. Mm -hmm. I think I think a novelist does that, mm. but I but poets I think work when the poem comes to them. So they work on having that poem come to them, and I'm doing that with my paintings, and I'm trying to look at them every which way. And now with um, with my phone, I take pictures, and sometimes I turn the painting upside down to see how the balance looks. But I, I get a different view that way. I want to see the painting in all kinds of uh, light. And um, I, I'll even sidle up to a painting to see how it looks from the side, see how the, the color and the lines work. So that's really interesting. That's what I'm doing. There's an interesting distinction there between yeah. um, a, a writer who might be like a journalist who's working on a deadline or yes. who's working on a deadline for yes. a book. Yes. Yes. Who, yeah. who relishes in the freedom to just whenever inspiration strikes. Yes, to, yes. To do some work. I need to write a poem, I think they're thinking. Huh. And I do feel that compulsion. 
I need to make a painting. I do feel that. And boy, do I, t I pay attention to that. Hmm. I definitely uh, paint when I have to. But if I'm not interested in a painting, I'm not going to work on it because it won't work. I'll make hmm. bad decisions. You know, I, I think that's the advantage I have of having painted for so long. I know when I'm in the groove and I know when I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's really good. I, I, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the advice to other artists and, and just people at home is we're all, you know, we may find ourselves with some time. Me personally, I've never worked harder, even though I'm working from my home, but it, it seems, um, you know, some people might have time um, to, to produce. And so, you know, yes. there, there's some, I think it'll help. I think it'll help people get through this. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So we only have like a minute or two left. Could you, okay. could you show, like, there's some um, really amazing stuff behind you. Could you, could you spin your thing around and just show us the studio? Just um, okay. Okay. Now I'm going to show you first the painting I'm currently working on. And I think it's kind of harsh. So oh, okay. I, I'd love to know what you think. Can you see it? Wow. You know, th that is, um, the, the paintings that I saw you produce uh, not too long ago were very, very subtle compared to that one. It is harsh, but it's, it's beautiful. Well, this is from last, uh, I think, November. Okay. Can I haven't see seen it? that one either. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. Those are like um, little... This like, one isn't pulled out the whole way, so I can pull it out if you want. But it also was before the crisis, but, but it's very recent. Hmm. Whoops, I could end up having a little disaster here. <laughs> Don't do um, that, Marjorie. No, so there's this one. And then um, this is actually the most recent. So it was softer. You know, this is before the uh, severity of the COVID-19 had set in. That's remarkable, Marjorie. It so, really is. You are, there, there are a lot more um, lyrical black lines than anything else that I've seen you make. Ha, huh, interesting. And the one behind my chair. I feel like I've seen that one. Andy, you haven't seen any of them. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> and you know, when we had a blizzard recently, I did some paintings, some little ones. So I decided to, um, I decided to paint some little ones. I don't know if you want to see those too. 30 by 40. Cool. So, so this is all recent. This is all recent, Andy, because everything else was brought into Fargo. Okay. Everything else is in my Fargo studio. So when you say recent, how recent do you mean? Um, September. Wow. And probably most of this is from January till now. So we're talking somewhere between four and six months worth of, of work. Right. But, you, but there are some in Fargo that I paint, have painted during that time that you haven't. Um, I don't know if that one's done. I love it. So, you know, I just try to change up the palette. I keep, try to keep challenging myself. It's fun, you know? Sometimes it's like a great mathematical problem. It's just meaty and interesting and fun. And, and it, is, it is geometry, you know? So often it's geometry. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, this has, been, this has been amazing, Marjorie. I, um, <laughs> I've been to your Fargo studio. I have, I have yet to visit your Lake studio, which is where you're at now. Um, you can't come right now though, Andy. 
I know. I'm stuck in my house, but you know, as soon as, the, <laughs> as, soon as we're allowed to leave someplace, I'm sure to visit. But and you're invited. If and anything, you are invited. <laughs> really, really appreciate your time. So thank you for um, thank you for your generosity and your spirit, and for giving us um, a little bit of of yourself today. Um, really, really appreciate that. Um, you're welcome. And Andy, stay well. I'm going to stay well, yeah, and I'm going to. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best, and you too. And you I too. will. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to close with um, a few thoughts. Okay. Uh, Marjorie, stay with us, and um, and then and then we'll. Um, okay. We'll end there. Um, where is the creativity, wellness, inspiration, and hope that we all need more of right now? Please consider a gift to Plains Art Museum's "Let's Get Through This Together" campaign to ensure that the museum can thrive in the future. Yep. Go to plainsart.org slash support to give a gift of any amount that will make you a part of Plains Art Museum's supporter community. There's also a link in the comment section below for you to go directly to our support link. And with that, we will be done. Um, thank you again, Marjorie. Um, and thank you all for joining us um, for this installment of these brief conversations um, between myself and um, these amazing experts within the museum community here in, in Fargo. Thank you. <laughs>